Add the stream. There you are. Welcome. Can you guys see me? Am I am I on? Is this is this working properly? Add the stream. There you are. Okay. Welcome. Why is there a noise? Can you guys see loop? me? Am I am I on? Is this is this working properly? Oh, Add the stream. I know there why. You are. Okay. I know Welcome. why. Welcome. Why is there a noise? Fixed. It's fixed. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. To Grandpa Voltaire's I Don't Know How to Use Technology Seminar. <laughs> Welcome to the Lair of Voltaire. This is the March 2023 video newsletter. There hasn't been one in quite a long while because life. That's it, just because life. Uh, because I've been very, very, very busy with a million things, starting with the release of Black Labyrinth last December. And then the press tour for Black Labyrinth, which was a lot of January. And then the tour started. And as you probably know, I'm creating a whole bunch of really incredible merch for you, including this guy. But we're going to talk about him later. Uh, but first, as always, where am I playing near you? I have a graphic for that. Let's find out. It's around here somewhere. Voltaire, you're so disorganized. I am performing this weekend, March 31st, in Chicago, Illinois, at the Cobra Lounge. That show is sold out. So if you don't already have tickets, I'm sorry to say, you will not be seeing me in Chicago. The very next night, April 1st, I will be in New Orleans, Louisiana, at The Goat. And then April 8th, I'll be in Sacramento, California. I think it's at the Colonial Theater, if I'm not mistaken. It's with my friends who do the uh, Sinister Creature Con, although this is just going to be a standalone concert. And then the 14th, I'm in Portland, Oregon at the Coffin Club. The 15th, I'm in Seattle, Washington at El Corazon. April 22nd, I'm extremely excited to finally be returning to Nashville, Tennessee. I will be at the East Room. And the 28th of April, I'll be in Boise, Idaho. I don't remember the name of the club off the top of my head. I'd have to go look. Then we get into May. May 6th, I'm in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This show is going to be a little unusual because it is at a diversity and inclusion sci-fi Star Trek convention. So I do not know that I will be doing my traditional, uh, you know, King of Villains set. I might be doing a lot of Star Trek stuff and, you know, some of the other songs mixed in. You know what? I'm going to get off this graphic for a second to face you to say that I reached out to a club in Philadelphia to see if I could play there the night before. And that would truly be like a King of Villains show. And I think it's called like, was it called Lovecraft Bar? No, The Raven? Gosh, I forgot what it's called. You know what? I got to Google it. Let's see. Edgar Allan Poe themed bars, Philadelphia. According to TripAdvisor, Cool Bar with Edgar Allan Poe theme. Review of the Raven Lounge, Philadelphia. The Raven Lounge. I wrote to them, didn't write back. You know, it's just so strange to me. Like these clubs, you know, they have entertainment, they have bands, but I, I, I can't tell you how many clubs I've written to saying, hey, I'm doing this tour. There's a whole bunch of sold out dates. I'd like to add your town. I specifically want to play in your club. No reply. No reply. We're going to get back to that. But anyway, 
I'm still holding out hope that maybe there will be a Philadelphia show the night before somewhere cool and intimate and small where I can do like the king of villains set. And then the very next night I can do more of the Star Trek stuff at that convention. But either way, I'm going to be in Philadelphia one way or the other. Then the UK tour begins May 16th, Glasgow, May 17th, Newcastle, May 18th, Bristol, the 19th, Bedford, the 20th, Sheffield, and the 21st in London. And now we're going to talk about that a little bit. Folks, I'm not a nervous Nelly. I know those shows are going to do great. In fact, last year, there were certain powers that be, <laughs> should not be named, he will not be named, who seemed very, very concerned that tickets were selling very, very slowly and wanted to postpone the tour. This was last year. And I was just like, it's going to be fine. And the shows were great. The shows were really well attended, and, and we had a really, really great time, and everybody had fun. Well, the same thing is happening now. You know, certain powers that be are like, oh, tickets are selling very slowly. I will say Bedford. I don't know what's going on in Bedford. We've sold like 10 tickets for Bedford. So if you live in Bedford, you live near Bedford, you're planning on coming to the Bedford show, I <laughs> just want you to know, get your ticket today, or we're probably going to cancel that show. I don't know what's going on. It's just... That show's not moving, so I will attest that that show is definitely for whatever crazy reason. I don't know. Maybe Bauhaus is playing across the street the same night. Sometimes that happens. All the other shows, tickets are selling steadily, but if you want to make UK a regular stop on my tours, I ask you, I humbly beseech you to buy your ticket today. Send a message to these clubs send a message to these promoters that you're going to come to the show and that you're excited about this show. I did not perform in the UK for many years. And last year was my very first time doing a UK tour. I would just love for the UK to be every single year, just every single year, five, six cities, seven cities, whatever, definitely London, a whole bunch of other places, if you'll have me. So, uh, but I need your help to do that. I need you to help me send a message that this is something that you want. So please get your tickets today if you can, and hopefully I'll see you in London. And hopefully they will not postpone it to September like they've been saying. I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're. Gonna, I think the tour is going to go off in May, but I might need your help to make that happen. So please buy your ticket today. Moving on, I am in Las Vegas, Nevada, June seventeenth. I'll also be there for the licensing expo. That's a whole other story for a whole other day. That's not really open to the public per se. So, but if you're if you're a licensing agent, uh, or if you're in licensing in any way, you might see me there. I'm going to have a gothic homemaking booth set up. Then June 24th, I'll be in Los Angeles, California. Well, I should say Las Vegas. I'll be at Scarlet, which is at Artifice Club. And then uh, June 24th, I'll be in Los Angeles at Bar Sinister, of course. July 1st, Austin, Texas at Elysium, of course, and then July 2nd, Houston. Okay, Houston is another one of those places that I never play. I don't know why. I'd love to play in Houston every single year. I don't know why. No one's ever interested in me booking me in Houston. Uh, it's just the way it is. So I played Dallas. I played Dallas. I played the Dallas area four times last year. And of course, I always play Austin as well. But Houston always falls between the cracks. So it's not falling between the cracks. I made a concerted effort to make sure that I have a Houston stop on this tour. So if you're coming to the Houston show, please, for the love of Cthulhu, buy your ticket. Again, we kind of need to show these promoters and these clubs that this is going to be a successful night. Because some people start getting nervous and they start getting twitchy. So it's important to send that message like, yeah, this is going to be a successful show. It's going to be great. There's nothing to worry about. You're not going to lose your shirt. It's going to be fun. So if you're coming to the Houston show, please consider getting your ticket today. Then I am in Phoenix, Arizona. I believe it's a Rebel Lounge. Then I'm in Springfield, Indiana. Now, this is like a, an outdoor hippie festival, and I'm not joking. It really is. It's outdoors. It's on a uh, it's on a campground, and it's called Midian. You know, like named after the uh, imaginary land from a Clive Barker book, Nightbreed. 
and it's a fun cool weird pagan community and they do this thing outdoors and it's like out in the woods and i they told me it was half an hour outside of indianapolis and somebody else was like oh it's like two and a half hours outside of indianapolis either way they're gonna have to get me there <laughs> and back but uh because I thought not everybody might want to be outside in the woods, I also booked an Indianapolis show. That is the very next night, and that's at Black Circle in Indianapolis on July 22nd. And then July 29th, I'm in Richmond, Virginia at Fallout. Now, August 19th. This is exciting. Williamsburg, Ohio. You're like, where the hell is Williamsburg, Ohio? I'm going to tell you, it's 30 minutes outside of Cincinnati. So why why would I be booking a show 30 minutes outside of Cincinnati? Simple, because there is a haunted attraction called Terror Town. And it is like an old Western village that some folks purchased. And instead of keeping it going as like a regular old Western village, they've turned it into a terror horror themed old Western village. So it still has like this old timey Western vibe. But it's a, a, a haunt. It's a, like an entire town that's a haunt. And I will be performing there, and I am so excited. I met those folks at Transworld. Their company's called All Hallows' Eve, and their town is called Terror Town. And I am super excited to be performing there. I don't know if the tickets are up yet, but uh, the way we're going to do it is if you're coming to see me specifically, there'll be a ticket that says Aurelio Voltaire ticket. And all both tickets, I think they're like $30 or $33, both tickets, whether you buy the general admission, include the entire experience, uh, the whole Terror Town experience. But if you buy the ticket that says Aurelio Voltaire, they will know you're coming to see me, and that's going to help a lot. So I appreciate if you do that. I do not think the link is up yet, but I will keep uh, you know keep you abreast of when that happens. Uh, what else? After that, I'm in Tampa, Florida at uh, New World Music. And and then Orlando, Florida at the Abbey. And then I'm in St. Augustine, Florida, September 16th at uh, Ancient City Con. And then October 14th, I'm in Denver, Colorado. And I think it's called Mercury Cafe, if I'm not mistaken. And then the next night, I'm in Colorado Springs. And uh, I don't know that I've ever played Colorado Springs. Somebody told me I played Colorado Springs once. They could be right. <laughs> but I've definitely played Denver a whole bunch of times. So that's going to be a one-two punch, Denver and Colorado Springs. Hope to see you out there. And then I'm in Orlando again for Spooky Empire Ultimate Horror Weekend. I'm very excited about that. I haven't played Spooky Empire in a long time. Uh, I did cancel the Polish show, the Castle Party. Unfortunately, I realized I had a scheduling conflict that i couldn't get out of and so i was very sad because i get a lot of email from poland believe it or not poland and brazil believe it or not poland and brazil two places i've never played is where i get the most fan mail from so i was so excited to finally be able to play in poland and it fell through and uh it's just not going to happen but i am dedicated to performing in warsaw so as soon as i can manage to get a european tour going I am going to make it a point to make sure I have a show in Warsaw and Kiev. I have I had a show in Kiev in May, uh, but it was postponed uh, for reasons you might be able to imagine. So hopefully that's going to happen in September. I'm not really sure, but um, I, I hope to be in that area sometime soon. And that is all of the places I'm playing near you. But it's not the end because I am adding shows all of the time. And I can tell you right now that I'm working really hard on Detroit. You know, I'm really trying to get back to places I haven't played in a long time. I'm trying to get a Detroit show. I am trying to get a Pittsburgh show. I'm I'm an event for a second, okay? Sometimes, you know, people say, Voltaire, why don't you ever play here? Why don't you ever play in this town? So Charlotte is a town that I get a lot of requests for. Never from promoters, always just from fans. Oh, how come you never play Charlotte? Or like North Carolina or even South Carolina, like the Carolinas in general. And I forget why, you know, like I'm like, it's just like it's never on the tour roster. And I honestly, sometimes I even forget why I don't play there. And in the case of Charlotte, it's because I can never get a show there. And I can't explain it. Again, I can't explain it. I am an American 
Airlines frequent flyer. I fly to all of my shows and I fly an American. And Charlotte is an American hub. I'm at the Charlotte airport twice a week, twice a week. And I never leave the airport. So it's like the easiest place on earth for me to go do a show. And recently, when I booked Nashville, I saw that my flight was routed through Charlotte like it often is. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to have a lay. I'm going to book a layover in Charlotte and I'm going to book a show in Charlotte and it's just going to happen. So it was like if, if Nashville was the 22nd, the Charlotte show was supposed to be like the 23rd. And I wrote to 10 clubs in Charlotte and received zero replies, zero replies. After being very, very persistent with one particular place, I think it was the Milestone, the, the booking agent finally got back to me and, and he was like, yeah, that date's taken. And he was he was cool. Like we spoke about it and he, he tried to even, uh, you know, get, get that night for me. But it didn't work out. It was like, I do not understand what it is with Charlotte. Maybe they just have so much entertainment. They're just, they don't care. They're just not hungry for entertainment, maybe. I don't know. But I want you to know, if you live in the Carolinas, that I am trying really hard to perform somewhere near you. So I haven't figured out yet if I'm going to uh, ask one of you to just arrange something so that I have somewhere to perform on April 23rd in Charlotte, or whether I'm just going to cancel that flight and just go straight to New York from Nashville. I haven't figured that out yet. So if you're listening... If you're from the Charlotte area and you think you can make something happen, get in touch. Voltaire.net. Voltaire at Voltaire.net. Get in touch and we'll try to make something happen. <laughs> I The last time this happened to me, I ended up playing in somebody's backyard and it was like one of the best shows ever. And it was Chicago and it was a bunch of years ago and it was, the same exact thing happened to me. I hadn't played in Chicago in a long time and Chicago is another American Airlines hub. So I was like, I fly through Chicago all the time. So I was like, I'm just booking a flight to Chicago. I'll sort out the rest later. I started reaching out to clubs. Nobody was available or cared. And so then I didn't, I had a flight, but I didn't have a show. I had a flight in a hotel and no show. And I ended up playing in Champaign, Illinois, in a guy's backyard. And I swear the whole thing sounded really crazy. And when I got there, there was a stage, there was a sound system. We roasted marshmallows in a fire pit after the show. It ended up being one of the coolest experiences I've ever had. So I'm open to weird, unconventional show situations. There you have it, Charlotte. And now that is truly all there is to report on the shows. Like I said, I am working on uh, trying to book some other shows in other places. So this is not by any stretch of the imagination all of the shows I will be playing this year. And so, hold on a second. I got Grandpa's got to pull out his glasses because I can't, I can barely see anymore. Sol Orana, saludos de México. Espero volver a verlo el año que viene. Éxito en la gira, maestro. Muchas gracias, Saul. Muchas gracias. I'm just getting, uh, I'm just starting to look at the comments now. As many of you know, if you tune in, periodically to these things i have so much to catch you up on and what's you know the state of the union address that i don't even look at the comments for like the first hour uh chase who kill who kill who kill who kill oh hey voltaire congrats on the tour for future reference i think you would enjoy jojo's bizarre adventure that sounds that rings a bell jojo's bizarre adventure i will check it out uh, there's many, 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 many comments. So I apologize if you've sent a question. I usually have this little graphic I put at the bottom of the screen that looks like this. Bing! Please hold your questions for the Q&A at the end. Or we can have it moving. How about not both at the same time? That's kind of annoying. So now you know, please hold your questions until the Q&A at the end. Because we do have a few more things that I'd like to get through before we get into a question and answer. Josh Calderon says, got any advice on breakups? Oh my God, been beating myself up mentally for days. How do I get over it? I'm excited for your Vegas show in June. Oh my God, that's such a hard one. And you're asking the wrong person because the last time I had a really bad breakup, 
I wrote an entire album about it called Heart Shaped Wound. And then I didn't want to record it because the songs were too painful to perform, to play. I didn't want to record it. So I uh, dragged my feet. I signed a contract to record it and I was already independent. I didn't have a record label. I didn't need a record label, but I specifically sold that record to Project Records because I wanted someone to pay me for my pain. I was in a lot of pain, and I was like, someone should pay me for this pain. <laughs> I want to monetize this pain. And so Project uh, picked up the rights to that record, and then I didn't record it for three years. And it was about three years later that uh, the president of Project wrote to me, and he was like, three years is a long time to wait, and at this point, you're just going to have to give me my money back. And I was like, okay, 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 I'll record it. <laughs> That's what, and then I recorded Hard Shape Wound. So I'm the worst person in the world to ask. I do not know. I've never handled it particularly well. You know, just hang out with friends. Find find people you like to be around is probably the best advice I can give you because I, I, I don't know the answer to that. It's a very painful situation, and I don't know the answer. And why did I just go out of focus? Focus on my eyes. Um, in any case, where was I? Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about merch now. There's so much merch coming. And there's been merch, new merch in the web store that I have purposely not announced because I've been waiting for certain other items to arrive because I was fairly certain people would want to get certain things at the same time. So let me, let's begin with that. Okay. There is this for the very first time ever. This is Lair, the perfume that I have been making and wearing for decades at this point. Has it really been decades? Well, it's been many years. I'm going to see how close I can get with this. Eh, that's not very good, is it? That's not, eh, it's not going to focus on that, is it? Maybe it's too close. How about that? That's a little better. Now, this is a half an ounce, and this is an expensive little half an ounce. It is $66, and you might be wondering to yourself, Voltaire, have you lost your mind? Why is this so expensive? I'll tell you why it's so expensive. Number one, I make it myself right here at the Lair of Voltaire. It is 100% essential and fragrance oils. It is not cut with alcohol. It is not cut with a carrier oil. It is not diluted in any way, shape, or form. This tiny little bottle, if used correctly, will last you a very, very, very long time. Let me give you an example. This is how it's used. I've never demonstrated this before. So anyone who's bought this and used, like poured it all on themselves, <laughs> I, I apologize. Put your finger on the opening. You tilt the bottle. And then when you take your finger off the opening, it has some residue. And you put a little there and a little there. And that's it. That is all you need to smell like a vampire for the whole rest of the day. So uh, it's made here in the lair. It is very, very high quality ingredients. And I will say, because it isn't cut with any kind of carrier oil or with, with anything at all, really, if you have sensitive skin, I would, I would maybe hesitate or I would test it or I'd mix it with some, mix it with a carrier oil. I have kind of sensitive skin. It's never bothered me. It's, it's fine for me. Um, if you're wondering what it smells like, the primary notes are sandalwood and patchouli, but then there's like some tropical stuff in there too, you know, like rum and, and coconut and vanilla. So it really is kind of like somewhere between a vampire and a pirate. <laughs> and someone pointed out to me that it's the color of like blood tinged rum, which I love. So yeah, it's like a little bottle of bloody rum. Uh, so that's in the web store. Like I said, and this, it's in very short supplies. So there's not a lot of it. Get it while you can because I've been super, super, super busy and I don't know when I will be able to sit on the floor of the lair again mixing this concoction. So get it while you can. Uh, here's another new item from the web store. This is Villain Black Nail Polish. Let's see, if I, how, how am I doing with this? Is that any better? Let's see. Let me try this, this direction. Oh, really close. Now, this camera just hates me. Okay. Oh, it did it. 
I'm gonna do here. We're gonna do the uh, the thumbnail. Come on, come on. We can do it. Come on, focus. Oh, do I have to be like right in the center? There we go. There we go. That's the thumbnail. All right, that's how I do my thumbnails now. <laughs> so anyway, uh, thank you for joining me on this uh, photo shoot for thumbnails. So this is um, my black nail polish. It's black, of course, and it's called Villain. Villain is my my shade of black. It is very, very, very dark. Now, I will tell you that the people who mix this concoction told me that it was it's, it's a cream nail polish. It's a traditional nail polish. It is not a gel. They uh, They warned me away from gels for a myriad reasons. They said, go with the traditional nail polish. They claim it's a two-coat nail polish. Everyone who has used it has told me it's a one-coat nail polish. So it is really thick. It is really creamy. And it is very, very, very opaque. I have seen people take this to a salon, get their nails painted, and then have a top coat put on. I've seen a gloss top coat, which looks really amazing. And I've seen a matte top coat, which looked equally cool. This is in the web store. It's $16. And the inevitable question, are there more colors coming? Yeah. Actually, uh, just put some new colors into production in very, very limited quality quantities. So because I kind of want to see how people feel about them. But there's like some blood reds and some royal purples. And there's even like a wicked green. So there's some other colors coming down the pike. So... That is presently available in the web store. Now, this is exciting. This is, yes, Blood Red, Emma, Blood Red. Well, I think well, I have two reds. One's called Blood Bath, and it's really like a, a, a red, like a like really like a cherry red. And the other one is called Vampire, and that one's like a little bit more of like a wine. You know, it's got a little bit more burgundy to it. Here's an exciting item. This is the Dark Side Royalty makeup kit and it comes in this limited edition bag that shan't ever be made again here let me try another thumbnail here <laughs> i gotta look surprised that's how you do thumbnails now on the internet you gotta look like a total doofus like <laughs> like oh my god it's shocking that it's just total clickbait and people are like oh my god what's that guy so freaked out by so anyway it comes in this beautiful limited edition bag they shan't be made again they are only ever going to be made for this extremely limited run of this makeup kit did my yumi print the makeup bag like whoa where'd you go like she did the totes or was it someone else it was my yumi my yumi organized the entire manufacturing of the bag in fact so big round of applause for my yumi it looks really really great it's really good quality and inside it has like a satin satin lining let me get my sticker out of the way there's a satin lining black satin lining now what's in here you ask well i always uh oh okay that's embarrassing I threw a sticker in there, but it got stuck to something else. Luckily, this one's mine. <laughs> There's a sticker in there, a Lara Voltaire sticker. And there is, what do we start with? We're going to start with the mascara. So I everything comes, or most of the items come, in a velvet pouch of some sort. So this is a velvet pouch for the mascara. Let's see, it says, oh, can you, can you see that? I don't know. Can you see it? Layer of, the layer of Voltaire. This is the mascara. It's really great. It's real. It's all made in the United States, but for the most part, and very high quality, cruelty-free, vegan, not tested on any animals. And then there is a pencil, a black... I basically... And I hope you don't mind, but I basically just manufactured the stuff I use. If it's successful and if people like it, of course, we will grow the line. But for the for the first run, I just made the stuff that I use. Again, in a little velvet pouch, 
a black eyeliner pencil. This is the only item that is not made in the United States of America. This is made in the Czech Republic. It is really, really high quality. And I have to tell you, I have trouble with eyeliner pen. I love my guy liner. You know, I really love my guy liner and I like to wear a lot of eyeliner, especially when I go out, especially when I do shows and certain eyeliners, and I'm not going to name any brands, but there are some very, very famous brands out there that I bought thinking, oh, well, they're really expensive. So they must be really good. And they make me cry. I just, I start putting it on and it just makes me cry. This is the best eyeliner I have ever personally used. It is so mild. It does not hurt my eyes in any way. It's really creamy. It's just good stuff. Good stuff. Then there is this. I want to get some heat for this one, but again, a little black velvet pouch. And you open it up, and there is a black lipstick inside. There's the layer of bolt hair on here somewhere, too. Oh, there. Well, it's kind of hard to see because it has like a, a shrink wrap, but it says wearable tear on there. Um, and it's black, of course, you know, because goth. Now, some of you are immediately going to be like, well, where's that cemetery smile lipstick? Hey, I, I wish I could tell you that that was available, but unfortunately, it is in production hell. Let me see if I have a picture of that. I don't remember if I ever uploaded a photo of the cemetery small lipstick let me take a really quick look it's not looking good it is not looking good no i guess i never did okay well it doesn't matter so the cemetery smile lipstick is unbelievable i mean it's just this really gorgeous sculpted skeleton with a black lipstick inside and we have been trying to make this thing for two years and you may have seen on my website and on my social media, I'm like, come in this fall. This was like back before Halloween. Come in this fall, Cemetery Smile Lipstick. It was just about done. They were like, it's done. We're ready to ship. And again, I, you know, while you might want to make the packaging in China, I make all of the makeup in the United States of America where the quality just tends to be better. And uh, they sent the skeletons to the factory where we make our makeup and the lipstick didn't fit. It just didn't fit inside. So somewhere along the way, something got messed up and they just didn't fit, which means that after two, what happened? Did the lipstick kill a lab rat? I'm pretty sure I just said it's vegan and cruelty free. So I don't know, maybe that's just a joke, but yeah, it's not tested on animals. In any case, uh, once again, we're like back to the drawing board, you know, so unfortunately that is tied up This is a very very high quality black lipstick to tide you over in the meanwhile and now perhaps the most exciting part of this makeup kit and that is this Eyeshadow palette it Says the layer of Voltaire and inside and if you look on the back there's a little label that says the black labyrinth palette and the colors are villain unicorn gloom zenobia and valerian and those of you who know black labyrinth really well can probably guess oh can I open this? I'm doing it right I'm doing it wrong oh there we go let me show you what that looks like it is basically everything you need for a a goblin king look with some extra you know purple tones in there for a black labyrinth take on the goblin king look so here we have villain which is a rich black next to it is white well this, the name for this color is unicorn and it's white is a white unicorn color directly next to it is a cool gray i call gloom next to that is a light purple called zenobia and finally a very rich royal purple Called Valerian and it comes with a little brush and a little mirror so you can see yourself can you see yourself you appear in mirrors or you're a vampire and that is the dark side royalty makeup kit it is available right now in the web store there was a delay in shipping so for those of you who ordered one I apologize they were supposed to go out the 15th and truth be told 
there's always a problem. There's just always a problem. You know, there's always something that potentially goes wrong. And in the particular case of this one, I was not happy with the way the colors came out in the eyeshadow and I sent them all back. And I was like, nope, that's not going to work. They were all very warm. The colors were very warm. So the gray, instead of being like a cool gray, was basically beige. And then the light purple was like a mauve. So it was like a beige purple. And I was like, this is a goth makeup kit. Can't have beige in there. Certainly not. And, and the white was like a cream white instead of a cool white. I, was like, I got beige, beige, and beige. I'm going to lose my goth points. So anyway, that is presently available in the store. I will tell you right now, there's very few of them. And again, not sure when or if I'm making more. So I it, I believe it's $99, which is really basically the retail price for the makeup and the bag is free. What else? Oh, you know, then there's a couple of items that are on the way, but haven't arrived just yet. And I'm going to show you one of them right now. Oh, I forgot to grab this. Oops, my throne is about to take off on its own. Candy Claws Leathery Wings Addiction. You know, I might I might go for the I might go for the uh the thumbnail get <laughs> ready. There we go. <laughs> I probably shouldn't smile so wide because everybody can see I'm missing a tooth. How do I do you know it's oh how do you do this? How okay no this way. There we go. There we go. Click. Do one like that. Click. All right, that might be the thumbnail. We'll see. Um, so yeah, no, I almost broke. I almost broke a wing, Blood Phoenix. There have been other Candy Claws figures in the past. I saw. I saw one around here somewhere. There have been two other versions of Candy Claws. The original one had brown wings, and looking back, I'm not really sure why I chose brown wings. I don't know. They were sepia, and and then. When they finally ran out, I made more of them. And the second batch of them I made with purple wings, which looks more like how he looks in the book. And that was called the Midlight Midnight Flight Edition. But then those sold out. And I was like, well, do I make more Midnight Flight Editions? I was like, you know what? Let's try something new. And this is easily my favorite version yet. I love the leathery wings edition. I am so excited about this and I hope you are too. They are not here yet. They are still on their way. They're still being sewn. Literally, they're still being sewn, but the, I hear that they're very very close to done. Let's see if we can get a close up. It's really beautiful embroidering on the face. Let's see how close we can get. There we go. That kind of works. He's super super cute. Really high quality and really, really nicely made. So uh, I would say uh, maybe in a month, within within a month perhaps, even possibly within a month, we'll be seeing this peekaboo, peekaboo, candy claws, plush toy. Also within the month is the lair bat. And this is quite possibly one of the things I'm most excited about. I don't know if you've seen this thing yet. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. The Lair Bat is not a plush toy. He is a rigid figure. Uh, so it's a it's a rigid figure with uh, synthetic fur. So it is vegan, if you will. It's very realistic looking. He's super cute. I'm not sure which which one I want to feature in the thumbnail. <laughs> Turn around. There we go. Yeah, like that. Like that. Yeah, it doesn't really show that well. Anyway, it's super super soft. So, despite being rigid, it's very very soft to the touch, and it feels really nice. It says the layer of Voltaire on the back, and I should have these in the store within a month. Within a month from now. And uh, I don't know the price yet. I have to figure it out. I have to figure out because it was so expensive to ship that I have to kind of figure out at the end of the day how much it's going to be. But if I had to guess, I would say $22. That's my guess. It's my best guesstimate. Does the head turn? No. 
Who else? Tiger stripes. Tiger stripes. No, it doesn't turn. No, it didn't kill a rat. It doesn't do it. It's just, it just hangs out. That's all it does. Uh, unfortunately, I can't, well, it stands. Uh, I have to kind of balance it. It's a standing figure. So it's the kind of thing that you might want to put like on top of a bookshelf. Oh, this, this might be a good thumbnail. Hold on. Uh, how's this? Click. I don't know. That was stupid. I, I feel stupid. That, that one felt stupid. Um, but yeah, it's a standing figure, except whenever I put it down somewhere, it's out of camp, out of is there anything I can stand it on. There we go. Stand it on these matches. So it's a standing figure. So it's the kind of thing you can kind of put like on a shelf, on a bookshelf, looking down over your lair. I just absolutely love these. And I hope you do too. There's some other incredible things coming down the pike, but I don't think I can talk to you about them yet. I'm looking at one of them right now, but it's not ready, but it's too far from ready for me to get you all excited because then we're going to end up with another one of these like cemetery smile experiences, you know, where you're like, where the hell's this cemetery smile lipstick? I was ready to buy it and I'm like waiting for a year and a half. Um, in any case that, oh, somebody asked about the CDs. So I, I, I put up a post today. Because I am, I finally decided to press a whole bunch of my CD. Yes, the I, anyway, a whole bunch of my CDs that uh, people are asking about the cat toy, but the cat toy is not in the store, in the web store. The cat toy is only available at shows. And I don't know if I have one to show. Oh, I do. Jesus Christ. I actually do. Okay, this is unplanned. All right, so before we get back to whatever the hell I was talking about, this is the cat toy. This is only available at my shows. Oh, 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 oh there it is. <laughs> this is too much. Fun. This guy's too much fun. I love this dumb thing. And it is, as you can see, a bat at the end of a piece of wire. And if you manipulate it just right, it really does look like a, a living flying bat. And um, people people with cats in particular go kind of crazy for this thing. Anyway, that's the cat toy. That's the flitter bat cat toy. But like I said, those are only available at shows. Those I have a very, very limited number of them, and I bring them with, them, with me to the shows. So in any case, as I was saying, uh, I, I did a post today about CDs. I really hope nobody thought that I was like being a whiny, complaining artist because nobody ever likes to hear artists complain about their problems. Um, but I wasn't complaining. I was really making a, just an observation, you know, that like once upon a time, CDs were like a really big seller at the shows. And I would sell like 90 to 100 CDs at a show. And then over time, it just really started, you know, dying out and... I don't think I even consciously realized why, but you know, like in the beginning, it, in the beginning, it was a sore spot because it was because of illegal downloading and that was no fun for artists. But then the illegal downloading, like did this about face and basically became streaming platforms. And so uh, people started shifting the way they listen to music from like buying physical music like cds or cassettes or vinyl and listening on streaming platforms which is fine i guess um and then like the death knell for cds as far as i'm concerned is that like uh, apple and a bunch of other computer companies like just stopped putting cd drives in laptops i have had situations where i've said to a friend hey i want to give you a copy of my new cd and they've just looked at me and like i have no way to play a cd just give me the link to where I can hear it online. And, you know, I, I'm way past the point of complaining about how people decide to listen to music. Um, you know, people want to stream music. I'm thrilled if they're streaming my music, you know, I'm happy as can be. But it does present a little bit of an issue for what I have at the merch booth because people still come up and they're like, uh, do you have Raised by Bats on CD? I'm like, no, it's out of print. Do you have hate lives in a small town on CD? No, it's out of print. Well, do you have boohoo on CD? It's out of print. Do you have the devil's breast on CD? It just sold the last one. 
And like one by one, I started just like letting CDs go out of print because the demand just didn't seem to be very high for them. But people do continue to ask. And some markets are different than others and some countries are different than others. And there's places where people are still really into the CDs. So what I've decided to do is to print 1,000 copies of each of my 13 studio albums, but they are going to be the last pressing. I mean, unless something crazy happens and all of a sudden CDs come back with a vengeance, but barring something nuts like that, I'm going to press The Devil's Briss and Almost Human and Boo Hoo and Then and Again and Ookie Spooky and To the Bottom of the Sea and Riding a Black Unicorn and hate lives in a small town and by trickshul i actually have like a box up somewhere so i probably don't have to do that one uh and so on and so forth uh until i have like all of them and i will be selling them individually at stores but once i have them all but keep in mind this is like this is like a twenty five thousand dollar investment to do this you know for like it's so dumb <laughs> it's just so dumb it's gonna take me 10 years to make my money back on this one but I feel like people really want to be able to buy CDs. And so I'm going to give people that opportunity. And what I'll probably do is maybe take like 500 of each and put them aside and make a box set, which would mean coming up with an idea for like a cool box that they go in and maybe thinking of some extras. I don't know, some photograph. I don't know. I don't know what I'd put in there. Um, but anyway, that's the plan. Since somebody asked, I wasn't really going to plan. I wasn't really planning on talking about CDs, but since somebody asked, that is in the works. And uh, that's really pretty much all I came to tell you about today is where I'm playing near you and all of the new merch that's coming out. There's like, honestly, there's five other pieces of merch that are in the process of being developed that I'm so excited about, but uh, they're just not ready to show really. So you sometimes see me teasing, teasing about them on my Instagram or my Facebook or even here on in the community tab of the YouTube. Uh, but I'm not going to parade something out in front of you if, if, it, if it still needs a lot of work because I don't want to end up with more egg on my face. In any case, um, I guess the only... Oh, well, well, there's. I guess we could talk about Gothic homemaking. I've had a dream for several years now of doing an April 1st episode of Gothic homemaking. That was either like a bloopers episode or an episode called Epic Gothic Homemaking Fails and talking about some of the behind the scenes failures that you never saw because obviously it's a show and it's edited to, to, to be good. You know, it's not edited to be like, oh, wow. You know, I mean, it's not, it's not, you know, a reality show. So it's not full of drama. It's not full of, it's a disaster, but there are, some projects on the show that were a disaster and some of them that never got finished and some of them that had to be completely redone from scratch. So I am, don't quote me, but I am trying to make that episode for you right this very second. And I hope to have it out April 1st. Fingers crossed. There are some pretty spectacular failures in that episode, which I just find so delightful to be able to share with you because I learn a lot from failure. I learn more from failure than I learn from success, which is why I really appreciate failure. And I don't, I hope to never take myself too seriously. So I, I like to poke fun at myself. Well, I like to poke fun at everybody, but I feel like you can't really poke fun of, at others unless you can poke fun at yourself. So I like to show my foibles and my, my failures and and there's plenty of them <laughs> so right i mean i think i'm going to do a top 10 if that tells you anything that there's like 10 terrible things that i've made or destroyed or not made well on the show so if all goes well you might be seeing that on april 1st fingers crossed and then i guess really the only other thing to tell you about is that uh, there's a black labyrinth book in the works but Things have been so hectic since uh, January, since, well, since Black Labyrinth, the record came out, that I haven't written a whole lot of it. 
Now, my patrons on Patreon, like those on the uh, Goblin City tier, have been receiving a chapter a month. So they've gotten chapter one, and they've gotten chapter two, and they're probably just about to get chapter three. Uh, so I've only written six chapters, so I can only keep that momentum up for three more months before I, I really better start writing more of this book. But I really, 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 really need for you to know this story. I think it is, if you read the story, it's just such, it, it, it's, it's going to make the, the experience of the album so much richer. You're going to really be able to see the musical when you know who all the characters are and what their motivations are and like what the action is. And so I'm very, very excited. And almost all of the illustrations were already finished by Abigail Larson and Erin Horrors and Dread Art and a few others. So the art is amazing. And I can't wait to share that with you. But I need... I need to do a lot of writing, and I and I haven't figured out yet. I, I I I'm having a hard time finding all of the hours in the day that I need to find. I'm either working 18 hours a day, or I'm completely mismanaging my time. I'm not sure which it is, and it might be a little bit of both. But uh, ideally, I'd like to go somewhere, preferably a jungle, for a month and just sit there and write, and then I'd finish the whole book probably. So, but I just don't know. I think I've kind of painted myself into a little bit of a corner with the shows that I've booked. I don't think there's, a, there's not a whole lot of free time between the dates I've booked and I'm planning to book more. But anyway, I'm committed to finishing this story. And if you're on my Patreon, then you're, you know, you're certainly getting glimpses of it. And I think that is truly all the news that's fit to print from Voltaire Industries this March 2023. And now the floor is open to questions. So I am going to go up here and I'm going to, oh, wrong panel. Let's go up here and let's turn that off. So I find very often that when I open the floor to questions, there aren't any. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see if there's any reason for me to stick around. Oh my God, it's one in the morning. So I have been talking nonstop for an hour. Uh, okay. I keep forgetting that if I really want to read these, I kind of have to, I got to go into old man mode. Die like Jess says that would be on my birthday. That would be on my birthday video, April 1st. Are Sacramento, California tickets still available? I got to wait till I get paid to get tickets. Jess, first of all, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, they haven't told me it's sold out. I've gotten a little spoiled on this tour. There's been a lot of sold out dates. And now when the show's not sold out, I'm like, why not? <laughs> but uh, I don't think that show's sold out. I think you should still be able to get tickets. Um. Your hair is gorgeous. Wait, where are you? Your hair is gorgeous today. What products do you use? Ask Kelly. Kelly, I use only one product. I I just tease that I have like the thinnest, finest, softest hair in the world. This is a miracle. Like the fact that I can form it into something is a miracle. So you're not going to believe this, but the first thing I do is I use like the harshest, most abrasive soap that I can instead of shampoo. That's the first thing I do. I use a soap. Mayumi finds this absolutely horrifying. I use a soap called Habon Sota, and it's a it's a detergent. It's meant for washing clothes. And I use it on my hair because when my hair gets really, really, really dry, then it's kind of like straw, and I can shape it a little. It has like a bit of body when it's super dry. So I basically intentionally damage it. And then I tease the crap out of it with a really fine comb, and that gives it a bit more body. And then I just spray it on all into place with sexy hair. I don't remember if it's called sexy hair or big sexy hair, but it's a big red bottle. And that's literally, that's literally all I do. And thank you for the compliment. And pastel polar bears. I want to ask if I had permission to make an animation for when the lambs became the wolves I was going to give you a hundred percent credit. Of course. Well, you can give me credit for the song. You shouldn't give me credit for the animation. That's going to be all you. And of course you can. I say yes to pretty much anybody who wants to use my 
music to make animation or school projects or anything like that. You know, just, yeah, have fun. I can't wait to see it. Uh, Johnny Lasagna says, are you planning on adding any more dates in Portland? Nope. I only play once a year in any given city. Once a year. There's some exceptions to that rule. For reasons I'll never understand, Dallas will have me like four times a year and it's packed four times. And I don't understand. It doesn't make sense and it doesn't, it should, shouldn't be that way. It is. And I'm grateful and I'm not going to question it. But yeah, if I were to play in Portland once, you know, you get like 300 people. And then if I were to play there again, you get like maybe 100. And then you play there a third time, you get 10. And eventually people are like, why is that guy still here? So, uh, so yeah, once a year. Mm, what do we got? What do we got? Who's this? Who's this up here? Oh, Blood Phoenix 93. Hello, Papa Bat. It's good to see you. Sorry, not a question, but hope you are well. And congratulations on these amazing projects. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for your support. I really greatly appreciate you here and on Patreon. You know, honestly, I couldn't do it without you guys. Just the fact that you're interested in all my wacky stuff <laughs> really keeps me going, and I really appreciate that. Long-time listener, first-time commenter. All right, Scram DM, welcome. Um, even though I love gothic and spooky stuff, have you ever seen Yellow Submarine from the Beatles? Yes, that movie is creepy as all hell. Creepy and trippy. Uh, Rhythian Black says, Evening Voltaire, I just want to say, keep up the hard work and stay motivated and positive. Hard work pays off, as I've recently experienced. Just recently went viral through photo shoots I've done. That's amazing. I've been watching your videos, and I know you've been working hard on those, so that's really great to hear. John M. says, can I ask a question on Patreon after the stream? You may respond at your leisure instead of live on camera. Absolutely. My uh, Patreon, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a messaging function, and I answer every question that I get on Patreon. Uh, it may not happen immediately, but they all get answered. So by all means, feel free to send a question there. Uh huh. Any plans for a show in Utah? Asks Dakota White. You know, I try to play Salt Lake City as often as I can. Salt Lake City would be one of those cities where I would play every single year if they'd have me. So, uh, you know, the last time I was there was at Area 51. I mean, like almost every time I've ever played in Salt Lake, it's been at Area 51. So, yeah, I recently sent an email to Area 51 and I was like, hey, I'm booking this tour, but they didn't get back to me. Um, but yeah, I would absolutely play there if, if somebody wants to throw an offer my way. Any chance for a South Florida show? Asks Dory. I don't get booked in South Florida. It's, again, one of those things. Like, for many, many, many years, I was um, wondering, like, why I can't get booked in Miami. And, you know, it's, a lot of it has to do with, like, the fact that I become very accustomed to performing in the scene, you know, so, like, at the local goth night. And goth scenes vary wildly from city to city. If you, I mean, I don't know if it's true anymore, but... When I would go play up in Vancouver, everybody would just be looking at me like I was nuts, like standing there with an acoustic guitar, because that was like a really like an EBM goth scene where it was just like, unch, 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 you know, like really hard techno sounding stuff. Um, and they're like, who the hell is this folky vampire and why is he here? <laughs> and for the longest time, the only club that i really knew of in miami was the kitchen club and they never seemed interested in having bands but you know there are venues and i just gotta i just gotta step outside of my comfort zone and and like you know vision video i think just played in miami and uh they have a they have a booking agent called rocky road a very good friend of mine in fact jody and andrew they're good friends of mine and so obviously you can book a show might not be at the local goth night, but you can book a show. So I just I just need to get out of my shell a little bit. And yeah, who knows? Maybe I'll end up in South Florida if I'm lucky. As long as it's not during spring break. How can I show you a picture of my project, Pandora? Oh, uh, Matthias asks. Well, 
my favorite way to look at art is if you put it on your social media and tag me or put it on your social media and send an email to voltaire at voltaire.net and say, hey, come look at this picture. I prefer that people don't send files because I've had people send me like 25 megabyte files and I've gotten enough of them that it like shut down my email for the day. So uh, I prefer people don't send files, but a link, just email me at voltaire at voltaire.net, send a link to where I can see it online and I'd, I'd love to look at it. Got to keep the lights on, says Capricorn Dragon. So very, very true. Uh, and Balthazar Mendez says, Voltaire, you should sell a hair dye. I would buy that a lot. Hmm. I would consider that. I'll tell you, if I had a hair, I mean, I, the hair dye that I use is really unique. It's henna. It's actually not really traditional hair dye in the sense it has like no peroxide. It, it's not really chemically based. It's like literally henna. I would definitely get behind doing something like that. Will there be a Salt Lake City show? I pretty much think I just answered that one. I will give you $21 to play in my backyard. Okay, well, that's a that's a start. All right. Salt Lake City, the auction starts at $21. Who's got $22? Let's see how high we can make, make it go. Uh, do you remember amusement parks? I like Jess says, of course, I was just at Six Flags in Mexico City. Uh-huh. John M., can I ask you a question? Oh, I did that one already. Uh, see, the thing when I start reading questions, though, is that, like, they all start, they start, you know, my ability to answer questions is much slower than people's ability to ask questions. So, uh, ultimately... Ultimately, I get really uh, behind. Do you know the price of the 624 show, says Ima Torao? No, I don't, because there's 50 shows, so I can't possibly memorize, like, the price of shows or the age policy, which is why I have a very handy website. It's Voltaire.net. And if you go to Voltaire.net, bam, concert details at Voltaire.net slash calendar. You will see all of the information that you need, presuming they've given me the information to put up on my website. And if it's not there, then email me by all means. Email Voltaire at Voltaire.net and say like, hey, there's no information about the show in such and such a place. And I will hunt down the promoter and I will get that information. Uh, Kathy says, can't wait to see you in Philly. Didn't see the makeup on your site. Is it? specific spot for pre-sale it's not it's not pre-sale it is just for sale and now that they're actually finished i literally just sent them to the web store today they will be shipping probably wednesday or thursday so go ahead and place your order and they will be heading your way pretty soon and it's just it's in the layer of voltaire section see the thing is that like i if you go here to voltaire.net right and you go to store and you click on any item, it'll take you to the ISO tank store. And that's the store where like the actual commerce takes place. So go to Voltaire.net, go to the store, click on literally any item, and you will be transported to where like all of the items are. Uh-huh. Voltaire, if you're ever around Missouri or Illinois, you should hit up Men Menards for spooky shopping. I've heard good things storm i've heard good things i know i've already said this before uh-huh big bad voodoo daddy yeah i don't know that one i have to check it out industry eight yes capricorn dragon correct industry eight is the name of the store but the easiest way to get there because i've even tried to find myself on industry eight and had trouble easiest way to get there is just go to voltaire.net go to my store there click on any item and you will travel to industry eight uh huh hey there can't wait to see you in sacramento california quick question will you be selling cds at the show particularly signed ones yes presently so i don't know if you caught the whole thing about me pressing cds in the near future but presently what i have is the black labyrinth of course and it's a double album it's 20 songs i have the best of aurelia voltaire volume one which is two uh, another double album and it's like 
you know, like the hits from my first six records. And I have the, the very best of Aurelia Voltaire Volume 2, which is the hits from like my next six records. So those are the three CDs that you're most likely to see at my merch booth. And I do sell them and I do sign them. Uh, Kate says, not a question. I just wanted to tell you that I'm a huge fan and my girls who are six and nine are, are two. At least the songs I've let them listen to. You shouldn't listen, listen to all of them. That's for sure. Uh, they asked to listen to the Black Labyrinth all the time. I'm delighted to hear that. And I'm also really happy that the Black Labyrinth is an all ages album. You know, like, I don't think there's anything on there that you would need to censor from anybody. And uh, it's probably a, a long time coming, <laughs> you know, that I've made an album where there isn't like that one song you got to skip if you're with your kids or your priest or your parents. I made a D and D character inspired by you, Captain. Oh, thank you. Odysseus, thank you. Yeah, Capricorn Dragon says, I'm so freaking glad you use henna. Yep, otherwise I probably wouldn't have any hair. <laughs> For the CD problem, asks Megan, why not press vinyls? Because it seems people are buying more than those. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. You know what the problem with vinyl is, though? It takes nine months minimum to make. There's such a huge demand for vinyl, and for decades, no one cared about vinyl. So there were very, very, very few companies making vinyl that now demand has far outweighs supply. And if you want to make a vinyl album, it takes about nine months. And it's a $10,000 investment. If I want to make like a thousand copies of Black Labyrinth, I'm looking at a minimum of $10,000. So imagine if I wanted to make vinyls for all 13 of my albums. I'm bad at math, but I'm pretty sure that's like well over $100,000 that I most definitely do not have. So that's the reason that vinyl, while yes, you're 1 million percent correct, that it's very much in demand, unfortunately isn't a simple solution because it takes so long to make and it's so expensive. I'm about to transition from box dye to henna for black hair. Can you make a tutorial? I, you know, I don't really like to do those kinds of videos. You know, because like there's a million other people who do that stuff. But like me dyeing my hair on camera is to me just, I, I feel like I have more to offer, you know, like how to completely fail at building something that should have been really cool. <laughs> that's that's my strong suit you know um yeah just the whole like just like really simple lifestyle stuff it just really isn't my thing i appreciate that you'd want to see that but yeah i can tell you you should get begin well it's spelled begin b-i-g-e-n and the color that i use is called oriental black it is a japanese henna uh it's pronounced actually bijin it just doesn't look that way it if you look at it, you're going to say begin, but it's Bijin, which it means pretty young lady in Japanese. And I believe there's like a picture of a, like a traditional, a woman in Japanese, traditional Japanese dress. It's a yellow box. And like I said, the dark, the darkest color they do is, is called Oriental Black. And that's the one I use. And obviously, as you can see, I purposely don't dye the gray parts uh, so that I've had those like Dr. Strange streaks. Um but yeah, I appreciate that you'd want to see me dye my hair, but it's just, you know, it's just not really the kind of, it's not the kind of YouTuber I am. Have you played any weddings before? Asks Chi Chi. Yes, many, in fact. I've done many, many, many weddings. I've even officiated some of them. And uh, weddings are weird. They can be really, really great, or they can be really, really, really awkward. You know, I've, I've certainly had my fair share of weddings where like the, the groom and the bride were sitting right in the front like this, like, like, I can't believe he's playing these songs at our wedding. And just everybody else is like, what did he just say? Did he just, did he just sing a song about a zombie prostitute? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> you know, so it's, I've had all kinds of experiences at weddings. But ultimately, it's, you know, it's very flattering when, when a couple love your music so much that they want you to be part of their special day. And I, I, I've got one coming up. You know, I do them periodically. I really do. And, and I enjoy them. Uh, I feel like, I don't know if it's, I think it's 
YouTube, like it, I don't know, like it repeats some of the, I don't know, maybe it's just I'm moving so slowly. Um, uh, pastel polar bears. How often is my Yumi at shows? When I see you all in April had a print, I was wondering if you could both sign it. Oh, I see. Uh, it really just depends. You know, she has a fashion line that she's working on. And I have my merch that I'm working on and I have my tour. And when the stars align and it makes sense for us to be in the same city at the same time, which I certainly prefer, then she is potentially at the shows. Um, so it's just hard to say. Like I honestly, like sitting here right now in, Mar in last week of March, I don't know if she'll be here in April. I don't know if I'll be in Mexico. I don't know if she'll come to the shows, you know, so it's just hard to say. I, I would, I don't know. Yeah. I just honestly can't say. So sorry. I wish I had a better answer for you. If you come to the show in Mexico city, she'd definitely be there. That that's going to be a given. How is your awesome black tub doing? Thylite Jess asks. It's funny. You should ask. Cause I'm going to be talking about that in my epic gothic homemaking fails video and i think i'm just gonna leave you in suspense but yeah we're we'll talking about that tub it's not as bad as you think though uh-huh mm-hmm mm-hmm okay okay so jaeger bishop says question i'm running a dnd game called the mystic mansion i would like to use your music and likeness for a demon bard of Asmodeus, may I? You never need to ask. You know, there are certain things that, I mean, look, it's nice that you ask. It's really sweet, and I do appreciate it. But it's not necessary. There are certain things you don't ever need to ask an artist for. Like, can I play your music at my party? Like, <laughs> of course. Can I make a character out of you in D&D? &D? Like, yeah, you're not making action figures and selling them at Forbidden Planet. So, yeah, of course you can. You know, and it's flattering. I find it very, very flattering when people... Are interested enough in my nonsense that they want to base a character on me or like use my songs like while they play the game like i think that's really fantastic so thank you for the thank you for honoring me with that mm -hmm. tammy i'm really glad you're enjoying the gothic homemaking videos hopefully there'll be more coming down the pike soon Uh, diligent dabber. Do you remember singing happy birthday, my old friend, to a four-year-old on stage at Temple Con, Temple Con about eight years back? I'm guessing that was you then, huh? So that, I'm really bad at math. Well, hold on a second. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Does that make you 12 now? Hope you're, hope you have parental supervision to be up this late. I mean, I don't know. You could be in Hawaii where it's 3 p.m. <laughs> well, in any case, happy birthday again. I don't see the makeup on your sales site. Yeah, Tiger Stripes, it's there. It's just not, it's not at voltaire.net slash store. But I promise you that if you go to voltaire.net slash store and you click on any item, any item, you will be, you know what? I'm just going to go right here. Let's see. Let's see. Voltaire. I don't know how to spell my own name. Store. Okay, so the very first item is the Black Labyrinth CD. The next item is Gothic Gift Wrap. Okay, so I lied, so don't click on that one. Okay, so let's click on two-piece coffin-shaped incense burner. Let's click on that. Two-piece coffin-shaped incense burner. Get yours here. When I click on it, I am transported to industry8.com. But I'm transported to the exact page where they are selling the coffin-shaped incense burner. So now I'm going to go to Categories, and I'm going to click on the Lair of Voltaire. And I've got some cemetery soap. i got a coffin-shaped incense burner. i got three Christmas stockings. I'll go to page two. Lair Perfume. And the Dark Side Royalty Makeup Collection by the Lair of Voltaire. So it's there. It's, you know... I haven't gotten around to I haven't gotten around to putting a listing for it on 
Voltaire.net store, but clearly I must because this is too many clicks for someone to get to something that they're interested in purchasing. So I will work on that. You have my word that I am going to work on that. I got to make a note for my, you know, I'm going to make a note for myself. Okay. Here we go. Merch. Add new merch items to Voltaire.net store. All right. It is done. Tomorrow. <laughs> I'll do it tomorrow. I promise. You like Jelly Roll? I don't know what a Jelly, a jelly Roll is. that a singer? Uh, pardon me, but quick question about doing covers of your songs. Would I need permission from the record label, such as Project Records, to make covers of your songs? Um... Typically, yes, but who cares? So I say just do it. Don't worry about it. And when you upload it to YouTube, YouTube may go, oh, this is a cover. And they might send, if it's monetized, they might send all the revenue to me or to whoever owns the rights, whoever's holding the rights. That's a thing that might happen, and I have no control of that. Um, but other than that, sure. Do it. Send me a link. I want to hear it. Mm. Mm. Been a long time fan. Keep it up, Voltaire. Thank you. C L one P B O M B thirteen sixty one. Chad. I bet you that says something. Clip bomb. Say clip bomb. Clip bomb. Thirteen sixty one. Thank you, Chad. I appreciate that. Oh shit! Did I hit one hundred thirty k? Oh, old man games just posted 130 K. I don't think, I don't think I'm at 130 K. I don't, I mean, I'm assuming you're talking about how many subscribers I have, but I could be wrong. I think I'm still at 290. What is it? 229 <laughs> and five or something like that. We'll get, oh wait, no, I'm not at 130 K. I'm, I'm at 229. K. You know, whatever. I don't know what, I don't. It wasn't really a question. Maybe I shouldn't have read it. <laughs> Can't wait to see you in Phoenix at the Rebel Lounge, the same place I first saw you as my first concert. Keep up the amazing work you do. Thank you, Deanna. I'll see you there. See you there. I remember... Oh, that was almost kind of yep, yep. Uh-huh. I wonder how many questions, how many more questions there are. I wonder how back backlogged I am. I don't dare move any faster though, because then I, then I'll definitely lose a whole bunch of people, and I want to try to get to as many people as I can. If it was legal and healthy enough, would you drink human blood? Asks Fuzzy Moth. Eh, I don't know. You know, I grew up in the '80s, so drinking human blood is kind of like a little passe, to be honest with you. You know, there was like this whole period of time where people got into drinking blood. And this is kind of like, I don't know why I'd want to, you know, I just don't know why I'd want to, you know, I, I don't, I don't imagine myself ever being so thirsty where I think to myself, some human blood would be good right now. <laughs> I, yeah. And I, obviously there's the health issue, you know, I'd be concerned about drinking blood. You don't know what you're going to catch in the words of that uh, cheap trick song. If it was legal and healthy enough. I mean, I think it is legal if someone lets you drink their blood. I just, again, I just, I don't know why. I, I think I just lost a vampire point because I'm like, why would you want to drink human blood? I think if somebody had had enough to drink and I drank their blood and I could get tipsy, I might want to just see <laughs> see what that's about. Uh, Kathy says, you may have another wedding. Not going to lie. All right, well. Email me. You'll be horrified when you find out what I charge for weddings. And then, <laughs> and then maybe, maybe there won't be one or maybe there will be one. Either way, I am honored and flattered that you would consider me. Sup, Volt? Says Hostile Ron. You know, just chilling here in my throne chair. <laughs> my old man glasses. This is really ruining the look. It really is. But without it, I wouldn't be able to read these questions, to be honest with you. Um, hola Voltaire, hi, hola Juan, ¿qué tal? Muchas gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. Where'd you get your shirt? It looks comfortable, John. This is one of my, this is one of my 
fashion secrets. You know, people are like, Voltaire's the king of goth. Yeah, I, I, this is a diehard work shirt from Kmart. Kmart. And one of the things that makes me saddest these days is the fact that you can no longer get these diehard work shirts from Kmart. Because they're rugged, they're comfortable. You know, I obviously spent several decades looking very androgynous, wearing a lot of makeup, wearing what basically amounts to women's clothing, uh, fishnet shirts and tights and things like that. And it was what I was into and I was happy and that's fine. But it's like I've gotten older. I've like settled more into this like safari goth, adventure goth, you know, like a little bit more masculine, a little bit more simplified, a little bit more streamlined. And I discovered these shirts like one year when I was like going to Indonesia and I was going to be in the jungle and I love them. They have pockets. This one's from my phone. This one's from my, my glasses. And maybe I'm just turning into an old man. I don't know, but I love these shirts so much and they're so comfortable. And I've had this one now for like five years and I wear it every damn day because I can't get any more of them. And I tried buying Dickies and they just do not fit the same way. It's just not the same. I never thought I'd say I miss my came apart, but I miss my came apart. Kmart <clears throat> came apart. Oh, it was your son, diligent dabber. Oh, I see. Well, please tell him I said hello and tell him I wish him another happy birthday just to be on the safe side. Will you ever record again song meanings and origins about the chosen, for example, which of the forest? That's a rough one because I haven't played that song in so long that I don't even know how it goes. I, 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 someone recently requested that on Patreon, not on Patreon, on Cameo. Very, very nice young lady requested a Cameo for her father. And she told me that his favorite song of mine was The Chosen. I was like, Ugh, I don't think I can play The Chosen. So I don't know if, yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Sometimes I say I don't remember how to play a song and then I pick up the guitar and I kind of figure it out. Just being lazy, I guess. A collab with Wicked Makers would be awesome, and y'all could put in both of your store, put put in both your stores. Says Kaz, Kaz Clown. Yeah, those are. I love their show. I think they're really cool. You know, I met them at Trans World, and we chatted. And I I interviewed them, and the audio was so bad that I couldn't use the interview. But you'll be hearing about that. In the epic fails video, unless I really epically fail and don't make the video at all. I will be purchasing a bat to add to my decor. Thank you in advance, Tammy. Oh, okay. Tiger Stripe says that they went to my about on the YouTube channel here and they clicked on the store and that's how they found it. Yeah, I gotta I gotta work on that. You gotta have it is an age old philosophy everyone knows that the more clicks it takes for someone to get to a place where they want to buy something the less they want to buy it <laughs> they may just never get there so you are right i need to work on that and i also need to work on making my beard pointier i have like a stray hair here it's really bugging me come on now get in there with the others get in there pedro making me look bad uh how do you deal with fan mail um uh, it's hard to say, hard to answer that question because, well, all right, here we go. I typically read everything that comes through Voltaire.net these days, or at least I try to. I try to reply to things that like really require a re response. If it's just like, hey, man, I really like your music. I just want to tell you that I might just read it and appreciate it. I have stopped basically uh, accepting any kind of DMs through Instagram, Facebook, or any other social media because I found that I was spending my entire day reading email and then reading DMs on Instagram and then reading DMs on Facebook and then reading DMs somewhere else. And then by the time I got back to email, I had more email and the cycle was just never ending and I wasn't making art. I was spending all my time doing customer service and I realized that was very unhealthy and I don't do that anymore. So if you really want to send a message, I'd say Voltaire.net is the way to go. And hmm. Rena says, are you willing to do a video shout out for my sister when you come to Portland, Oregon? 
I think your sister should come to the show in Portland, Oregon. And if your sister can't come to the show in Portland, Oregon, she should try to come to a show somewhere. Now, I'm always happy to do videos for people who are sick and can't make it or people who are deployed and can't be there. But I'm not super fan. I'm not super fond of making videos when I'm at the show. And I'll tell you why. I talk to every single person who comes to the show. So let's say 200 people come to the show in Portland. For whatever wonderful, crazy reason, 200 people will get on the merch line. And I'll be standing there from the moment doors open until the moment doors close until everyone who has wanted to say hello to me has said hello and we've had an exchange. And sometimes people are like, hey, you want to make a video for my friend? And like, I'm looking at the 150 people behind this person thinking I'd really rather be able to say thank you to the people who are physically there, you know, because if every, and it happens sometimes as a cascading effect, somebody will see me making a video for a friend and they'll be like, oh, will you make a video for my friend? So now instead of saying hello to 200 people, I am saying hello to 400 people and 200 of them aren't even there. So uh, while I really appreciate that you might like to have me do a shout out for your sister at the Portland show, I would suggest Cameo. Cameo is an app. You can go to cameo.com and I'm on there and I will happily do a video because I can do it from my home when I don't have 200 people in front of me very patiently waiting on a very, very long, slow moving line. So Cameo would be the way to go on that one. And thank you very much for asking. I do appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you in Portland. Uh huh. Uh, Edie asks, do you know if Cafe de l'Enfer is going to reopen at another location? Not really. No, I don't think it is. Uh, we discussed the fact that the owner is planning on having like it be a pop-up possibly around Halloween at some of his other establishments. Like he's got a place in Denver and I think he might have a place in LA, but if it's a pop-up and it's just for October, I don't imagine it would be like that whole big crazy hellscape of like gothic furniture i assume they would probably just bring back the menu you know i don't imagine that they would like completely redecorate a place so i'm not really sure what what the plans are but it's i don't believe it's coming back in this in the same on the same level as what existed i'm sorry to say because it was it's pretty wonderful place I can't wait to have more karaoke instrumentals, says Blood Phoenix. Yeah, I've got a whole bunch of them I'm just sitting on. I really need to just get those out there. Somebody by the name of Mayumi Toyoda says, why are you so handsome? Oh, my God, this stranger is flirting with me. I just don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> I'm only handsome because you think I'm handsome, and that that's what makes me handsome because I look in the mirror and I just see a, a toad. But the fact that you think I'm handsome makes me feel handsome. <laughs> and Lord knows you are spectacularly beautiful. You are spectacularly beautiful. And we should probably find, you know, get a room and maybe not do this online. But I love you very much. And you are just gorgeous. And I, if there was anyone on earth who I'd want to think was, want to think I was handsome, it'd be you. So I'm very appreciative for that. Uh, and then ironically, the next one is L LJT Love says, you just look so handsome. <laughs> I'm only handsome because you think I'm handsome. I've really missed listening to all of your talking vids. Oh, well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad you were able to, uh, to hop on board. And I know there's very, very short notice. Almost no notice is probably closer to it. Uh-huh. Been a fan since 2016. Thanks for all of the amazing work, ideas, and inspiration. Keep being spooktacular. Australia loves you. Thank you, Tina. Tina, I sure am thinking about returning to Australia this year. Maybe in November. I don't know how, but I'm thinking about it. So who knows? There might be an Australian tour. That's definitely one that Mayumi would have to come to because she's never been to Australia. And 
that's you know that's like one of those places where it's like you just ha you have to see it you know like you have to be there god damn this beer you know you know maybe i'll just go I'll just bisect it what's that that's a terrible look <laughs> okay that was a bad idea blood tastes like irony is that a is that a typo barb because blood blood definitely tastes like tastes like iron i don't know if it tastes like irony um we really wanted to see your show back in Mexico, but that week we were diagnosed with COVID, of course. We're fine now, but it's too late. Carol, sorry to hear that. You know, I'll be back. It's not like I'm not going to be back in Mexico City. I mean, I live there half the year, so there'll be another Mexico show. So don't despair. We'll see you yet. My cats, Grayson and Jetson, say hi. Hi, Storm and Grayson and Jetson. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yes, it is legal. Cannibalism is totally legal if you have consent. I did an entire thesis on it for culinary school. Wow. Okay. We're back to drinking blood and, I guess, eating people. You know, it's funny because I, in November, I had planned to go to Papua New Guinea. It's one of the reasons I think I might do an Australian tour because I'm already presumably going to be in Papua New Guinea, which is like the, you can swimming distance from Australia almost. And there, there were cannibals, possibly still are cannibals in Papua New Guinea. Cannibalism was officially outlawed in the 80s in Papua New Guinea. <laughs> yeah. So it's like part of the culture and uh, it's frowned upon. But, uh, you know, everyone who I tell them, I'm like, oh, I want to go meet the Kodawai tribe. It's these people who live in tree houses. And when I say they live in tree houses, I don't mean like a house that holds a family. I mean tree houses that hold 40 people. Because they're headhunters. And the rival tribes are headhunters. And they're accustomed to like midnight raids where like a rival tribe will come and like just start killing people so that they can collect their heads. I don't think that happens anymore. I don't think that's happened since the 70s which is still really recent, but, uh, you know, I'm fascinated by them and I, I want to see things that exist today before globalization makes everything a giant shopping mall full of Starbucks's, you know, like, and I want to meet people who are living a completely different existence and have their completely different world view. And I want to expand my knowledge of what it means to be human by meeting people who aren't like me and don't think like I do and don't believe the things I believe. You know, I, I just think that that's a huge part of understanding what it means to be human, understanding what it means to be on this planet is talking to and engaging with people who are not like you. And so I've been fascinated by that and there's an opportunity to go. And, I, and so anyway, so it's just funny that you should bring up cannibalism because everybody I tell, they're like, aren't you afraid of getting eaten by cannibals? I'm like, are you kidding me? It's a two-week trek to the jungle. I'm more afraid of being eaten by everything else. <laughs> Ants. Um, I freaking love dance, magic dance underground. Thank you, Cindy. Uh-huh. Pretty wise... Uh, Oh, price-wise, isn't it cheaper to just paint than use beautiful wallpaper? My bathroom colors are black, dark emerald, and old gold. I mean, yeah, sure. Obviously, it's going to be cheaper to paint than use wallpaper. Wallpaper is kind of expensive, especially my wallpaper. I have to buy it, you know? Like, it's a print-on-demand wallpaper, so if I want some, I have to buy it. And it's expensive. So, yeah, wallpaper is expensive. But, you know, I wouldn't be able to hand-paint the pattern that's in my bathroom and the pattern that's in my bathroom is like that bats and beasts in black and white is i think it's so spectacular and it makes me so happy when i walk into that room which is a huge difference from how i used to feel when i walked in it before so you know it's all about value it's like if, if it's if it's worth the money to you then it's worth the money and if it's not worth the money to you then it's not worth the money it's simple as that uh-huh yes says spooky kid six exists rest in peace kmart r.i.p kmart i'll tell you i really enjoyed kmart around halloween i'm not even gonna lie i used to really love going there around halloween they had some really interesting stuff a lot of it was crap 
but some of it was like really there were some things that shined in there the Jacqueline Smith collection you know Jacqueline Smith she was an actress she was one of Charlie's Angels in the 70s when I was growing up I you know, like I was very familiar with her and the fact that she had like a, a her tag on all this Halloween stuff and I'll never forget it was this black tag with white spider webs and it said like it had the signature the Jacqueline Smith collection I was like that's who I want to be I was so jealous of her. I was like, that's who I want to be. I want to be the person who has their tag on all of this kitschy Halloween stuff at Kmart. <laughs> Still trying to get there, except they clearly won't be at Kmart. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Safari Voltaire is something I need to draw now. Yeah. I'm a Safari Goth. Uh, I'm hot. Oh, I'm Hotep's dad. Says, I'm so happy to hear you again. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being here. Safari goth. So, yeah, I must be so backed up because we're talking about Safari goth, and I'm pretty sure that was like half an hour ago. Like, I'm telling you, I move very slowly on comments, but it's because I care. It's the same at my show. Same at my show. That's why there's a line with 200 people, and it takes like eight hours to get to the end because I care. And I want to hear what people have to say. And I don't like to rush people. I got to tell you, in Russia, ironically, Russian in Russian, Russian in Russia, in Russia, the security guards had a very, very different opinion of how you did a meet and greet. And people, they, there'd be a line and people would walk up and they'd say, hi, I'm a really big fan. And then they like, I'd say, oh, well, thank you so much. And then the guards would just grab them and like shove them out of the way and grab the next one. And I'm like, oh my God, you can't do that to people. But yeah, they they kind of had this philosophy of very efficiently moving through the line very quickly. I don't like to do that. I like to take my time with people and hear what they have to say. Uh, in any case, getting back. Uh I know it'll be a while before you post instrumentals for Black Labyrinth, but one of the songs I want to cover is What Will We Do in Your Honor. Thank you for saving my life in so many ways, Voltaire. Oh, it is. Uh, it's lovely to hear that. You know, on days when I'm like, why am I doing this? This is a waste of time. I, No one cares. <laughs> Hearing stuff like that keeps me going. So I really appreciate that. Thank you for sharing that, Blood Phoenix. uh witch of the forest says thank you for answering i also got a cameo video from you as a gift on the 15th of march with raven's land it was amazing thank you for that ah that was you witch of the forest my pleasure i really love doing those they're a lot of fun and like, again because i can do them at home at four in the morning you know and like set up my lights and really focus on what i'm doing it's really just it, it works out very nice to do it through cameo so good to see you're in good health having recently hurt myself from my joints giving out i'm so glad to see you i'm sorry to hear that joy i hope you're feeling better i hope you get better soon social media is a big poison i don't blame you says pastel polar bears it can be you got to know how to limit it you have to know how to lim you have to know how to manage it you you can't just go all in all the time because it's designed to suck you in all the way until there's nothing left of you and you just want to kill yourself. And I don't, and I'm not exaggerating. That's not hyperbole. So you really need to know like what your boundaries are. You really, you need to ask yourself, what are my boundaries? What am I willing to do? What am I not willing to do? And then you really have to kind of like try not to give in to the, you know, compulsion that is social media because it's very very compulsive you know you end up like just i've noticed that you know instagram is basically robbing some tricks from tiktok where your feed you know you're like for, i follow very few people specifically so that i'm not on the phone all day right so like i'll see like two or three things i'll put the phone away and now it's just like all of these random viral videos that i've never signed up to look at but you'll get sucked in and you'll start looking at it. And before you know it, an hour has gone by. And that's an hour you could be making art. It's an hour you could be writing a song. You could be talking to your friends. You could be talking to your family. You could be having a meal with a friend. And it's very, very dangerous. And it's it's designed, it's designed 
to steal your soul and to make and and to grab all of your time and to keep you on the phone to keep you away from doing other things so you have to really try to be conscious of not allowing yourself to get completely sucked in we do live in the age of social media to a certain degree you're going to look at it you're going to you're going to be doing some scrolling like everyone else but you really got to got to know when it's time to put the phone down Sojay's Park Adventure. Sojoy's Park Adventure. I'm playing and on making something from my cosplay group that will use a cow skull and thinking of some gothic decorations with it after. All right. Sounds cool. It's great to see an unashamed goth unwaving in his love of Halloween and darkness. Have a great day. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, you're so courteous and giving. Thank you. Tinny, Tinny Vile. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I might need my glasses for this one. Tinny, Tinny Vile, Tinny Vile, Tinny Vile. Thank you. It's very kind of you to say. Do you think you'll possibly do a show in D.C.? I'd like to. D.C. is one of those places, like the promoter who always booked me stopped doing shows, and no one really kind of like stepped in. To be the promoter that like books the dark cabaret gothic industrial bands so there's like the scene just kind of dried up and it's very often that way there's usually one person who's booking all of the bands like in this genre when they come through fayetteville arkansas or wherever it might be and when that person decides that they've had enough and you're like, this scene is not very supportive and they're not buying tickets and they're not coming out and they're complaining a lot. And, and like, it just feels like very thankless. And that person finally gives up. There's very often no one else who steps up to the plate and says, let me, let me book Rasputina, you know, let me book creature feature, you know, let me book uh, insert name of spooky band here. And, uh, and when that, and when there isn't a person focused on that, then it becomes really hard to play in that town. You have to work extra hard to figure out where to play, how to play. And it can be done, of course, you know, you set your mind to it. But that was the case with DC. So I really need to find like a new contact or figure something out and get back to playing in DC again. Uh, Pyrotoxin says, hey, Voltaire, thanks for all the work you do putting out your art. We can't thank you enough for it. Thank you, Pyrotoxin. I appreciate that. And should we start wrapping this up? Oh my god, it's all right. How about two at 2 a.m. on the nose, which is 11 minutes from now? Oh my god, <laughs> you're tall, you're muscular, you have all your hair, all positives in the looks department. <laughs> I'm tall, I'll give, I'll give you that much. I don't know about muscular, unless you like flabs of steel. Got quite the beer belly, and I don't even drink beer. Uh, accidentally hit send on my previous message, says Pyrotoxin. Would there be any chance of you getting an Oklahoma show? There was. I was in the work, you know, there was one that was in the works for April, and then it fell through. Uh, and that promoter is somebody that I've worked with many times in the past and she's having surgery. So she was like, Oh, sorry, I got to have surgery. So we're just going to have to, you know, postpone this and, and, and take it up again in the summer. So I presume that, you know, when she's feeling better and she's ready to book shows, then we'll just get back to it. And so I, I want to believe that I'll be back in Oklahoma before the end of the year. Um, hmm. Yep. Welcome to Voltaire braids his beard. <laughs> I've never braided my beard. I don't think it's ever been long enough to braid, to be honest with you. Hoping you come to LA. I did the wine candelabras from one of your friends and love your songs from Billy and Mandy. So joys park adventures. I have a show in LA in June, June 24th, I think at Bar Sinister. So if you're 21 and up, come to the show, and I'll see you there. 
Got the makeup bag. So excited. Oh, Kathy the Cup. I'm delighted to hear that. Thank you for your purchase, and I hope you enjoy it. It's all, I will say this, it's really high quality makeup. It's really great stuff. You know, it really, really is. And if it does well, I'm going to build on it. I'm going to do like a, like a, diff, you know, like a reds and vampire set. And, you know, the sky's the limit. If it does well, we're going to build on it. But thank you for being one of the first to give it a shot. I will not eat people, says Tiger Stripes. I almost feel like they're repeating this to them. I will not eat people. I will not eat people. I will not eat people. Uh -huh. So you performed for the first time at the Clockwork Academy last March. I love all of your works and can't wait to get my hands on a Candy Claus plushie to go with my book. Well, thank you very much. I can't read your name because it's in Hiragana. And unfortunately, I don't read Hiragana. But thank you for <laughs> thank you for buying the book. I'm really glad you're enjoying it. Uh, this is a little silly, but do you have any opinions on pet rabbits? I think my lap lion head mix, Mr. Floppy Disk has been trying to steal your hairstyle recently. Do I have an opinion on pet rabbits? No, not really. I'm anti-pet. I just, I don't believe in keeping pets, but keep in mind, I live in New York City. I have, for the, you know, practically grew up in New York City. And New York City is a place with tiny, tiny, tiny little apartments. And I watch people with with dogs who they leave alone for 18 hours a day, like while they go to work for eight hours and then they go to have dinner with friends and then they're just like, oh, my dog. And it's like, your dog's been like it, practically in a cage for 18 hours a day. And then, you know, they take them out and it's like, they feel like it's like a hassle to take the dog out. I just, I think that if, if I lived on a farm, I would have pets. But since I live in a tiny little apartment and I'm away a lot, I don't think it's fair to any kind of animal. That was really not the question you asked. Uh, and I'd much rather live like somewhere like Bali, Indonesia, and have my pets just be the local animals that come to visit at night, preferably flying foxes and things like that. You know, leave a little food out for them. Maybe they'll come by a little bit more often. But, you know, no cages, no leashes, just a mutual respect kind of thing. Um, but, uh, you know, we have a neighbor in Mexico who has rabbits and I have a very, very, very good friend here in New York city whose sister has a rabbit and they seem to be very happy with their rabbit friends. So I haven't been around the rabbits enough to have an opinion aside from if you are making that animal happy and that animal's making you happy, then I'm happy too. Mm -hmm. Johnny Lasagna says, my boyfriend and I originally met when he accidentally blasted zombie prostitute in class. That's pretty funny. Delighted to hear it. Oh. 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 Okay. What did I just do? I just. Nope. Okay. I did something bad accidentally. I'm fine. Um, oh, four minutes. I unfortunately have work in the morning. Good night, everyone. Good night, in woods. I think everyone's probably getting to that point. Uh, I'm planning to make something for my cosplay group. Oh, we, oh, right, right. I read that one. See, it's like some. Sometimes they just pop up again. And one last question. One last question. Rydian says, I would love to do a Valerian cosplay. That would be amazing. That'd be pretty cool. Good night, everyone. Good night, Axel. Ale rather, Alex. g -Raf. Good night. And did you see Daria Conan animation of your song, Raised by Bats? It's really good. She's the one that animated the song. Yes, I've seen all of her animations, and they are all spectacular. Would you do a cover of Phantom of the Opera, the music of the night? Uh, says Matthias Matthias. I'd love to. I just don't know if I can hit all the notes, but I, 
I sometimes do it in karaoke and embarrass myself, but I love, love, love that song. But my vocal range is more in the range of the other guy. The, what's his name? I forget. The love interest. That's where my voice is. Not so much Phantom. Uh, Balthazar says, Voltaire, the new album, The Black Labyrinth, there's two songs on it that I love very much that are called Little White Lies and As the World Falls Down, they're so good. Thank you. I'm really glad you're enjoying the album. Leo Nevermore says, my first concert was yours in Orlando last year. I'm sure you don't remember, but I was the only pirate in the Abbey. Thank you for teaching my beloved and me that even when in complete darkness, something precious can be found. As I always like to say, nothing good lasts forever. Now that sounds negative, but I'll tell you why it's not negative. Because I console myself knowing that nothing lasts forever. So anytime I think to myself that nothing good lasts forever and I find myself in a bad situation, I know that that's not going to last either. So when I'm feeling particularly depressed or upset or I feel like all hope is lost or I'm spinning my wheels, and why am I doing all of this stuff? No one cares. All of those feelings of doubt that you have, all of those feelings of that you're not reaching the place you're trying to get to, all of those feelings of failure, it, it, it's going to pass. That that thought, that feeling will pass. I say, take a nap. That's what I do. I take a nap. There's a, a series of videos on the internet that kind of sort of gone viral. And it's a, an Indian man from East, East India. He has a thick East Indian accent. And I'm not going to repeat what he says because it's a, you know, it's not, <laughs> it's, he uses some blue language. But he says, you know, if your day is going badly, F it. You don't need to make it a good day. Go home. Go to sleep. Wake up the next day. And it's so true. Sometimes you just need to step away from the situation that you're in. It could be as simple as, look, look, I'm a workaholic. So on a nightly basis, I pile all of this pressure onto myself. Like I have to do these designs and I have to write the lyrics for that song and I have to do this interview and I have to write these emails and oh my God, I have to build this thing and I have to photograph these things and I have to shoot this episode of Gothic Homemaking. I just pile and pile and pile all this stress upon myself. And once in a great while, the dam breaks. And on a night like that, I'll just be like, I'm taking the night off. I think I'm just going to go to a bar and have a drink. Or I think I'm finally going to watch Wakanda forever. I'm just going to get in bed and watch Wakanda forever. Sometimes you just have to step away or take a nap. Because as I said, nothing lasts forever, especially the darkness, especially the bad times, especially the bad feelings. But don't let yourself get swept up by all of that negativity. Just know that if you step away from it, you go to sleep, you might wake up the next day feeling like, what was that all about? Why was I even so bent out of shape about all of that? And I'm going to leave you on that thought. Dialight Jess asks, any tips for someone new to New York City? Absolutely. I have an episode right here on this channel called, I don't know, something like Spooky New York City Guide. It's a list of restaurants and bars and stores and cemeteries and fun things to do, I would strongly recommend you check it out. And you're going to find some really fun things to do here in this in New York City. Thank you so much for watching. As always, thank you for tuning in. I really, really appreciate your support. I hope to see you on the tour. Remember, get your tickets today, whether you're coming to the Houston show or whether you're coming to the London show. It helps tremendously if you buy advance tickets. It makes everybody feel more secure. It makes my job so much easier because then the promoter's not, you know, yelling at me and nervous and the clubs are, they understand it's going to be a profitable night for them and they're not all nervous and weird. So I greatly appreciate it when you can do that. Thank you so much for looking at all my funny new merch. There's so much cool stuff coming down the line and I cannot wait to share it with you. I will see you next time right here on Valera Voltaire.